Push on. Yep. Push on. Oh my <laughs> got a push on over here. Oh. Welcome to Jetfish. My name's Kirk Davis, and this is my show where I take you to meet some pretty cool people in some pretty cool places and have some pretty cool fishing experiences. And I do it all on a wave runner. With a range of over 150 kilometres, I can go anywhere that a boat can go. It's easy to launch, safe and stable enough to stand on one side or fight large fish. I've got all the electronics and storage that any boat would have, and I always carry with me the latest safety equipment. This life's not going to live itself. So hop on now, and let's head off on today's Jetfish Adventure. This week I'm in the far north of New Zealand where I'm going to be doing some harbour fishing. I'm going to be on the lookout for some mangrove areas, some little banks that pop out at low tide and some areas of high current and I'm going to drive there on the wave runner, park up and fish off the shore. Cruising down the harbour I came across an idyllic looking beach that looked like it would be at home on any picture postcard. What a beautiful location to anchor up the ski and unload my gear for a morning of fishing. The rig I'm using here today is two 7 bar mustard hooks and they're in a nice big fillet of salted mackerel that I've got from Top Catch on the way here. Beautiful hardy baits. I'll sit out there nicely on the sand. I do a half hitch over the top. I'm using 80 pound leader just because you never know what's going to come and grab it in these harbours. Some things have got big teeth. That comes up to a sinker I've got here and this is a release sinker in the sand. So you click these little pieces here and that locks it in, that then casts out, it sits in the sand. When a fish bites it, boom, opens up. You'll see the rod tip release the pressure, fish on. Fish on! Fish on, how was that fraction? I was just dropping it into the holder. Boom, something picked it up. Doesn't feel big. The car wire coming in behind him. They can sense the action, the other fish. And I think we'll let this guy go. Oh, he's let himself go. That's how it's done when you get the formula right. Let's get another bait on. See if we can't entice an even bigger one. Kawai came straight in and ate that burly. I just chucked a bit of old mackerel out there. Kawai came straight out of nowhere and just gulped it down. So that's how hot the fishing, or it's how hot I'm expecting the fishing to be. When you're doing this type of fishing, something like these beach spikes are invaluable. What it means you can do is you can just sit your rod in the holder and just watch your rod tip. That bait's out there, it's sitting on the bottom, it's wafting around in the current, and the action's not always going to be that hard and fast. So you can sit in the holder, you can get another one going as well if you, if you want to or if you've got time. Have your drag set just right and then keep an eye on that rod tip. The way that sink is going to sit in the sand is it's gripped into the sand. So when a fish grabs it, it'll actually pop out of the sand if there's a lot of current, and then that weight will come on. So you'll see the weight come off the rod tip and then back on, and then fish on. Here we go. Fish on. Saw a little tickle in the rod holder, well, just while I was rigging up my other one. 
ran on over. We've got a fish on. Let's get him in. It's a nice snapper. A nice Northland canny, this one. Look at that. Look at that for a beautiful Northland panny. The people we're staying with absolutely love fresh fish, so we're gonna put this guy on salt ice in the back of the wave runner, get some more bait on, and we'll go again. As the morning continued to wow me with its beauty, I threw a couple of fresh baits out and just enjoyed the serenity of the beautiful far north of New Zealand. With the bite slowing, I thought I'd go and explore another part of the harbour, and it was easy to see the areas of current. This particular shelly sandbank looked fishy. Oh, my goodness. Upon arrival, there were plenty of bait fish there, so there must be something bigger feeding on them that I could try and sink my hooks into. With the rods off the ski, the burly set, and the first line in the water, it didn't take long for something to come inquiring. Come on. Yep. Fish on. Oh, nice little car wife. Oh, wow, we've got a fish on over here. Oh. Got a fish on. All hell broke loose. There were fish everywhere. It was just getting that live. He just pulled the hook as this one took off. And there's a lot of weight here. So I don't know if this is a carwai, a snapper, trevally, who knows? Maybe even a little kingfish, you never know. Here we go. Right, let's get him in, we'll let him go while he's nice and fresh. Here he is, let's quickly let him go. Nice. Oh, a bit of variety. His kingy's there, so let's get a live bait on and see if we can't convert that to a bigger one. Quite a few bait fish splashing around. We're right on the turn of the tide. There's not a lot happening fishing wise action. So I'm gonna bait up some little flies and just see if we can get some fresh bait. You never know, we might get piper, little kawai. Who knows? But if we can get the local bait that's here, then that's surely what some of the fish are gonna be feeding on. So when that tide starts to run, we'll have some nice fresh local bait. Here he comes, let's get him up on the beach. It's fresh, all right. Nicely cooked in the corner of his mouth. Now let's get him on the hook, and we can see how you rig a live bait, and then get him out there. Right, now I've got the circle hook. I want to come just behind his head. I'm going to just dig down. You don't want to go too deep. They're pretty tough skinned, so you can just kind of flick it through there, angle the hook towards the front slightly, and then out it pops. That means when a fish comes over the top, it's gonna to fold backwards and it's gonna hook in. They're always gonna get hit head first. We'll fold backwards, boom, hooked in, away he goes. Let's get him out there. So he's out there. We'll just let him brew for a while. Sometimes with live bait, they can be out there for hours before anything happens. As long as they're swimming around nice and happy, you can check on them every now and then, check weed doesn't get caught around the line. If they're happy, just leave them sitting there. With live bait, you can actually let them go at the end of the day if they don't get eaten, and they'll swim off to live another day. I'm gonna need a camera. I've got no camera. Where's the cameras? I'm gonna have to chase this one, man. 
it's just about spooled me. Here we go, push on. Oh. Good take. Feels like a snapper. Let's see what we got. Here he comes. It's a nice size snapper. Let's get him in. He's a beautiful snapper. They look so beautiful in this clear water. Look at him. He's a beautiful fish. Just ease him up onto the shells there. We want, not even going to take him far out of the water. Look at that. Beautiful four pound snapper caught on the shell bank. Such a beautiful fish. I want to watch him swim away. So I'm going to let him go now. And we can all watch him swim. With this spot no less idyllic than the last, I was almost disappointed when the silence was broken. Oh, oh, oh. This is a nice fish. It's just resetting the live bait. This is a nice one. Feisty. Feisty than your nana. There's always plenty of excitement when you've got two rods in the water fishing on your own. It's a real great recipe for some action. Just resetting that live bait. Boom. Hooked up. Let's get him onto the beach and have a look. We've still got a bit of oomph in him. It's a nice fish. How's that for a nice fish off a little shelly bank in the middle of a beautiful harbour? Unbelievable. Had an amazing day so far today. Let's see if we can revive this guy and let him go. Off he goes, powering away. Beautiful. Love seeing a healthy snapper like that swim away. And that's the beauty fishing in a harbour like this. Nice and shallow, you're not pulling them up out of the deep, doing nothing to their swim bladder, very little handling, they're in the water pretty much the whole time. Such great fun. You probably notice that I keep my life jacket on in the harbour. And that's for a couple of reasons. One, because it's easy, it's got all my gear on it, it's got all my safety gear. So if I got injured or whatever while I'm here, especially if I'm here by myself, I've got my PLB, I've got my radio, I've got my clippers on me. That's reason number one. Reason number two is I could get on the ski and chase the fish at any time. So I don't want to have to be putting that on and I certainly don't want to be going on the ski without the vest on. Number three is if you end up in the water chasing a fish, these harbours have very strong currents. Every year someone drowns in a harbour, typically putting out a net because they think, oh, I'm just walking across with a net, how hard can it be? Reality is, it's very hard. When those currents go, we've got a fish on. This is a big fish. Right yeah mate, I need everything out of the way. I've got a monster on the line here. Matt, my cameraman's trying to get the jet ski ready and film me at the same time. It is Bedlam. I'm gonna need a camera. I'm gonna need a camera. I've got no camera. Where's the camera? I'm 
I'm gonna have to chase this one, man. It's just about spooled me. I don't know what it is, but it's big. If I was just fishing off the beach without the jet ski, then this fish would be gone because I am out of line. You gotta love when a land-based mission turns into a ski-based mission. It's the beauty of the ski. This has gotta be a big kingfish, man. It's just come in and absolutely smashed this bait. What a fish. Just wish it was on slightly bigger gear. I'm going to try and get some line back on him. Just try and motor up on him a bit without him taking any. And I'm glad I got on the ski, because there is no way I would have stopped this guy. It's now just a game of tiring him out. Jeez, it's big man, I cannot turn him at all. He's going wherever he wants. Look at the power. What sort of fish has this power? We're in a harbour. I was fishing in about four metres of water and you can hardly hear me over the drag. My goodness, what a fish. There's so much line out. He must have taken 250 metres. There was hardly anything left on my spool by the time I got the ski untied from the anchor. On the ski, oh my goodness. What a fight. I think I see it, I think it's a big ray. That's not good. Yeah. It's a big ray. Oh God, I thought that was a big fish. After all the excitement, it was a stingray. I'm not gonna keep him, so I just let him go. Thought it was a big kingfish, but it's a big ray. Still, excitement, my goodness. Right, let's get some more lines out, get back into some more fishing. So you notice when those kawai were swimming around, we were getting lots of bites from kawai, that's when that little kingy came in. So activity in the water creates activity in the water. So that's what we want to try and achieve here, just by getting these kawai on the bite might bring something else on the bite. And then we'll have another double hook up. Yep. Nice. Chill out, man. You're going back in the water in a second. Just relax. Be calm. There you go. Oh, no. This is a big fish. <laughs> Just like I was saying, when you get one fish, it can spark up another. I'm not sure what this is. Hoping it's not a ray. It's got some decent power. Oh. Bust off. That was huge. Could have been a big snapper or even a shark. There's plenty around here, but we'll never know. We're on. Five right, bait tip. Oh, big teeny head shakes. We saw the balloon drop under the water. We've got a kingfish on. Oh, he's right ashore. Right up in the shallow. This is what we've been waiting for. This is why we had that line out. Trying to catch those live bait. You put the effort in, and eventually, the dividends get paid. I'm not sure it's a huge one. But he's managed to eat that kawai, so let's get him in and have a look at him. Here he comes. It's 
skid him up on the beach. There we go. There he is, beautiful inner harbour kingfish. This kingfish is about 90 centimetres long. He's taken our bait and he was bleeding a bit on the way in. So I'm going to put him on ice in the Jetfish Icy Tech. And when we get home, back to the place we're staying tonight, we're going to be legends.